how do you make your suffering useful? How can you make your pain useful? That's be the question that I would ask anybody because I think the answer to that question is really the answer that everyone's chasing. Because if suffering has no meaning, if suffering has no purpose, then this life sucks. It's just shit. If suffering has no purpose or meaning, and everyone is going to experience suffering, that's what separates me from this machine. Is this machine will never suffer. What makes me human is my suffering. If you can tap into how you can use your suffering to help other people, that is maximum, maximum joy. How do you remix suffering into joy? I would ask anybody that, and because and not everybody has an answer to that. And those people who don't have an answer are are not going to be happy people because suffering is guaranteed. You know, there's like that 2 a.m. motivation that people talk about. There's something deep in your subconscious that is saying something is seriously wrong. The reason that you're not experiencing that enough to actually change anything is because you continue to distract yourself. We live in a world full of distractions. I mean, just at our fingertips, we have accessibility to the world. The most entertaining and captivating content that exists on planet Earth at any moment of the day. So it's hard not to distract yourself. That's why it's the harder decision to make. The struggle that you endure comes later when you choose to live a life of stagnation, because being distracted is comfortable. You know, as they say, ignorance is bliss. But there is one day when your time starts to run out that exists within the future, where you can no longer be ignorant to the fact that you've wasted your life. That is a day I do not wish on my worst enemy. It says I've learned that no matter what happens or how bad it seems today, life does go on, and it will be better tomorrow. I've learned that you can tell a lot about a person by the way he or she handles adversity. I've learned that making a living is not the same thing as making a life. I've learned that life sometimes gives you a second chance. I've learned that you shouldn't go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You need to be able to throw some things back. I've learned that whenever I decide something with an open heart, I usually make the right decision. I've learned that even when I have pains, I don't have to be one. I've learned that every day you should reach out and touch somebody. This is it. There has never been a more perfect day than today to put it all on the line. From the moment this video ends to the moment you're in bed. You're going to be focused. You're going to be locked in. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about whether or not you're going to be able to keep this up. Just focus on today. Use every ounce of your being to become the best possible version of yourself. One day to change your life forever. If you're able to do that, you'll realize the potential that you've always had, and you will never look back. I read a quote that said, "Time is going to pass anyway, whether you spend it how you want or let it slip by. The question is, will you look back and wonder where it went? People will always have something to say about your choices, but you get to decide how much space their words take up in your mind. It's about recognizing whose opinions are given out of care for you, and which ones are just noise trying to throw you off your course." Good things don't come with strings attached. You don't have to feel guilty for letting go and letting your life get better. You get to decide who you are. the The things that dictate our lives are our beliefs. Your life is as good as you believe it's going to be. I think 95% of life is how you look at it, and 5% is what happens to you. Understand that you have one life. How you live it is your choice. If you can dream it. If you can believe it, you can achieve it with the right energy input, the amount of work ethic necessary, and a good attitude. It can potentially become yours. Don't let life pass you by. You will either be a byproduct of chance, or you will take life and own it because you're only as good as the decisions that you make. Want to achieve something serious? You need to be serious. You can't achieve something seriously impactful if you're joking around and if you're losing your focus all the time. 
and if nothing is important in the way to you. So that means setting priorities, knowing when is the time to invest the energy, when it is the time to release energy, when is it good now to recover, when are you really feeling this is now starting to be the limit. These are all very, very fine aspects that only you know. I like to say that the big secret behind disruption is not having any idea how it's supposed to be done. And if you have no idea how something's supposed to be done, I guarantee you, you will end up being disruptive. But the key is you have to embrace not knowing. If you let what you don't know become your greatest asset, you are bound to do things very differently. Everything that we're doing is because someone else showed us how to do it. Close your eyes and pretend like you have no idea how to do your job. Just sit in that space for a minute, what comes up? If no one has shown you how to do your job, how would you be doing it? When you fight, always move forward. Even if you're only moving forward half an inch at a time, just always move forward. So when you're moving forward, 100% of your attention is forward. But if you're moving backward, even a half an inch at a time, half of your attention is always behind you and where you're going. So always move forward, always have a dare to go forward. Whenever you have a choice of either staying still and playing it safe, or moving forward, move forward. Life is very perverse in a way because the more we seek security, the less we have it. And the more we seek opportunity, the more we have security. Make up your own mission statement. What do you want to be in life? What do you want to give up? What are you going to sacrifice? What are you willing to forgo? If I could go back, I'd tell younger me, you're going to do some pretty great things, but you do not need to be great. All you have to do is be yourself. That will always be enough. I would say never give up. And that widens out to uh, whatever lens you want to put it in. I think as long as we are breathing, we have a chance, we are all eventually going to get to the finish line. I don't know if you just attack every day with persistence and follow your excitement and enthusiasm and Never give up, especially through those hard times, because I'm not going to act like it's all roses and candy canes. There'll be a bunch of hard times. Do your best, try to do the best you can, and never give up. You know you're okay. You're going to be okay. In due time, you'll find your way, and the pain will not have been in vain. The pain isn't even to blame. It showed you more of yourself, and it paved a brand new lane. The rain grows forests and trees and leaves. It starts off as a seed, and then it proceeds. It's going to come together in a time that makes sense. You're going to look back and wonder how it all managed to be more than you could dream. Don't be afraid of where you are right now. This is not forever. It's a powerful weapon in the world. We walk around with it. It's our mind. It's our brain. You have to be able to go into a very dark place in your mind and figure who you are. Go back to what you want to do. What's your purpose? We can't figure our purpose out or why we're here or why we're even born or whatever because our, it's so loud in our mind. We don't have any quiet time with ourselves to sit back and say, what do I really want? There's so many different dialogues in our head that we can't think. So my biggest thing is you have to be alone in a very dark place in your mind to think about what is important to you. Your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long. It is simply called winter time. But here's what you've got to do in your own personal development, your own personal growth. And that is just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter. You can't change the seasons. But you can change yourself. You say, well, what can I do about the upcoming winters of my life? The challenges that I know I'm going to face. Here's what you can do. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, and better. Go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Next, get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. 
Next time we see you, you may not even recognize you. How strong you're going to be able to become in language, in style, in personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is get better. No, you don't need to dream bigger. You don't need a vision board. And you don't need to meditate about your goals every morning. What you need is to master the anti. Understand that everybody receives the same advice. But if that stuff works, you would see successful people every way you looked. The difference between those who make it and those who don't is that the winners understand where they don't want to be. Think about it. Why is it that you cram the night before the test? It's not because you want to pass, but it's because you want to avoid failure. That's why you need an anti-vision. Ask yourself questions such as these. Who don't I want to be? What life would I hate to live? What work would I not want to do? And once you have these answers, you're going to have the motivation needed in order to actually make progress towards your goals. When you combine the vision with its opposite, you become a force so unstoppable that success has no choice but to find you. If you want to be a winner, it will get harder before it gets easier. If you're on the path for anything that's great or good, it will be pure hell. Then you start hitting adversity, people start making fun of you. You're not getting their progress as fast as you want it, and what do you do? You quit. If you want to win, quit quitting. What would your life look like today if all the things that you said you would do in the past, you actually did? All I want you to do right now is pause, and really sit with yourself and ask yourself this question. Do my daily habits align with the person that I want to become? Sit with that. Be real, be honest, be vulnerable. Do your daily habits and what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Does it align with the person that you want to become? Sit with that and be honest with yourself. And if the answer is yes, Keep on going, keep on growing, keep on making the shifts you need to make. If the answer is no, that is okay. But how can we start today to start making small changes towards the person that we want to become? How can we start today? You said, I'm going to do this, and you don't do it. You scan yourself. What do you have to lose? You got nothing to your name. You have no resources, you have no network. What do you have to fucking lose besides going after and chasing it, bro? Chase it. Like your life depends on it, because it does. It's your life, bro. You need to look at yourself in the mirror tonight and be like, what am I willing to sacrifice in order to make it? What bad habits do I have to put down? What bullshit have I been taught that isn't real? What circles do I have to surround myself with? What networks do I have to be with? There is no going back from this, guys. For the rest of your life, there is no going back. It's never too late to think about what your dream is, and, and your dream is the thing that brings you the most joy. But when you write down your fears, and write down your flaws, and write down your insecurities, and write down the pressures that you feel, and look at them and say to yourself, I'm good, then you'll be truly creative and uninterrupted, which is what you deserve to be. I'm just in a mindset right now where I'm trying to be locked in more than I ever have been in my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm just locked in with me. No one finna grind for me. You know what I'm saying? These dreams are gonna catch by themselves. My family's life is not gonna change unless I put in the work. And I feel comfortable with that pressure. A lot of you right now are living in a fairy tale. What does every fairy tale have? Right in the middle. A dark moment. Every fairy tale has a dark moment. The decisions you make in that dark moment determine everything. Now, if you're in that dark moment, and here's the thing, everybody thinks about a dark moment as a bad place. It's actually the complete opposite. Every win starts and ends in silence in the dark. Every change. You hear individuals that say reach for the stars, right? You've heard this all the time. 
Reach for the stars, reach for the stars. When do you see the stars, during the daytime or night? When are they more clear? In the dark. If you're in that dark moment, this is your chance to either run or advance. The moment in the dark will either, the fear will either propel you to where you want to be or the doubt the dark creates will paralyze you and leave you there. Capacity is everything. What's your capacity to be able to learn, to grow, to develop, to become more? The desire to go to another level and refuse to settle because others have found a perch. No, if you want to be like an eagle, you got to be willing to move to a level where your lung capacity gets tested. That's why eagles don't worry about when crows attack them. They simply allow them to continue the fight until they elevate to a level that the crow falls off. It's the same thing that you've got to do when life comes at you and you feel a bit overwhelmed. Increase your capacity to breathe and believe. Increase your capacity to imagine and dream, to manifest. The greatest of all qualities to guarantee success is the absolute willingness to go at anything and refuse to stop until you achieve it. And you know something? The statistics show that 95% of the goals that you set for yourself you will achieve if you refuse to quit. Our natural tendency is to sell ourselves short. Our natural tendency is to think of the reasons why we can't before we think of the reasons why we can. So the key to breaking ourselves out of the comfort zone and breaking ourselves loose of the shackle of helplessness is courage and confidence. Someone once said to me, Dylan, it's not you against the world. And I remember thinking, why would he say that? Then I remembered that I was spending a lot of time talking negatively about what other people were doing. I was working against myself instead of focusing on what I wanted to be doing. And when I did that, I was swimming upstream while everyone else was swimming downstream. And when you're swimming upstream, it feels terrible. And when I realized that, I got the courage to turn around. And now I'm swimming downstream just as fast as they are. And the more I paddle, the faster I go. And the more I pass by the things that I thought were holding me back. But I'm swimming downriver and I don't know what's downriver. And so the number one thing that makes me want to turn around and start swimming back up river again is I know what's up river. It's safe. And I'm scared of what I don't know. And when you're swimming up river, it takes so much work. It's exhausting and it hurts and you don't feel good, but at least you know it's safe up there. But safe is not progress. Easy is not progress. There is no progress without taking a risk, without swimming towards what you don't know. You can't move forward going backwards. Everyone has the possibility to unlock something very, very special about him or herself. And it's up to your actions. Ultimately, it's you yourself who also is able to unlock it. But to get prepared, to go on that journey, to go from point A to point B. You have to believe in yourself. And when you believe in yourself and start working on yourself, other people will see the effort you have put in and more people will come to help you on your way. But the first step, the most important step that you hear from every single successful person that you have to believe, you have to do the mental work, you have to take out all the gunk and put in some light. Change is possible, it is possible. Your current situation won't always be this way, but it is your responsibility to believe in yourself and to believe that you can change and you can get out of it. Believe in yourself, you can do it. Believe in yourself and you can do it. And I said, you know what? 
I have to make my own way. I don't have to be like them. I can be original, I can do my thing, but I also don't need to swim up river. I can swim down river too and enjoy this and enjoy my existence and enjoy my uniqueness among the other swimmers. I don't have to be alone. So now I turn downstream and I go into the unknown. And I do that knowing there's no progress without risk. And most importantly, I know that if I don't take that risk, I'm failing myself. So now the choice is easy. I'm swimming downstream. Why do we procrastinate? Why do we not do the stuff that we know we should do? It's because we think we have forever, you know? We think we're invincible. As they say, death is the only prophecy that never fails. Like, people think about like, well, what would I do if I found out that I had cancer? Like, if you got a terminal diagnosis from a doctor, you go, what changes would I make? But the reality is you do have a terminal diagnosis. Like the second you were born, that doctor knew with 100% certainty that you would die. He just didn't know when. You know, it could be eight years from now, it could be eight decades from now. We don't know. But to live in ignorance or in rejection of that fact is to set yourself up, I think, more often than not, to waste your life. Stop making excuses and start showing up. No matter how messy it is, you'll realize that everything you've been chasing is on the other side of what you've been avoiding. Get brutally honest about where you are and what you need to work on. It's not about being perfect. It's about being real with yourself and everyone around you. Drown out the noise, focus on what really matters and tap into something deeper. Don't put it off another day. The time is now. It's a lot easier to sit around and make a list of what you're going to do in the future. And so people will substitute that action for the action that will actually change them and make them better and move them closer to that version of who they know they can become. Just be careful. Be careful of getting caught in that planning phase of who you can become. Be careful of that planning phase because the planning phase should be about three seconds long. And then it's time to go get after it. Everybody thinks that failure is the opposite of success, but in reality, it's in action. Failure is simply a stepping stone. It's the XP that you need to level up. In action, on the other hand, halts all growth. If you don't act, you don't learn. If you don't learn, you don't grow. And if you don't grow, you will never achieve your dreams. That's why you need to get in motion. You need to take action, execute on your ideas, pursue your dreams. Stop worrying about what they'll think of you. Stop worrying about what if you fail. Stop concerning yourself over whether or not you're capable and just do, move, Act. Because when you finally start taking action towards your goals, your success is guaranteed. When it comes to achieving your goals or making any kind of change, just stop overcomplicating it. There is no big secret. There is no magic formula. The only thing that you need to focus on is doing the reps. It is boring. It is tedious. It takes time, but if you are willing to show up every day and just focus on doing the reps, over time, the change will happen, the success will be created, your strength will build, and you will achieve everything that you want if you're willing to just keep showing up and doing the reps.
you have decided who you are and you have full confidence in it, no one can bother you. It doesn't matter what was said about me. I know what I think of myself. I lack nothing. I was created and tested before I was born. I don't need your approval. I don't need your validation. I don't need your love. I love myself so much. I love myself enough for the both of us. And it's all because I know who I am. What you need is to master speed. Think about it. You have ideas, but instead of executing on them, the second you have them, you start to think thoughts like, oh, what will they think of me? What if I fail? I am not capable. Then you hesitate, procrastinate, and you don't take action. But you wonder why your life doesn't change. Understand that the faster you act, the faster you learn. The faster you learn, the faster you grow. And the faster you grow, the faster you will achieve success. So act with haste, execute with quickness, master speed, and you will achieve the life of your dreams. Attract what you are, not what you want. So everything that you are right now is what you're attracting. Your life billboard, what you put out, what you showcase, how you speak, how you move, how you treat people, that is who you are, and that is what you attract. If you want a better life, you have got to be incredibly intentional about what you learn. And if you organize what you learn into a framework that the more you learn about it, the more value it creates in your life, that is going to be the quickest and fastest path to realizing a better version of yourself, a better life, and your dreams in general. That's how important organized, purposeful learning can be for you. Start every single day with gratitude. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, where you are in life. It doesn't matter how angry you are, bitter you are, probably even more important if you're angry or bitter. Start every single day with gratitude because the truth is somebody didn't wake up today that wishes that they had. Somebody didn't wake up today that had plans for today. So if you have the blessing of waking up tomorrow morning, give thanks. Start your day with gratitude. It's really difficult to find yourself in a negative place, a bad place, a down place, an angry place, when you come down to the simplest reality of gratitude every single morning. Most people aren't even showing up. And I promise you, if you show up every single day consistently, that thing that separates you from your life changing forever will come. Also to condition myself to a certain vibe. That vibe is, I don't know what this life is gonna bring, but there is no alternative than when the challenge comes, when life is getting hard, there is no alternative for me than to just keep going. They say that you only live once, but that's wrong. You die once and you live every day. So live every day and make it count. Just remember, you're not behind. You're just on a different path. The path less traveled. And sometimes you look around and you're like, where the hell is everyone? Am I lost? Am I crazy? No, you're not. You're right where you need to be. And uh, it's a little scary, but it's also kind of fun. And I just want to say, welcome. There's a lot of us out here. One of the greatest success principles of all time is called the law of accumulation. This law says that everything great and worthwhile in human life is an accumulation of hundreds and sometimes thousands of tiny efforts and sacrifices that nobody ever sees or appreciates. Now here's the key to the law of accumulation. This law says that everything counts. Everything that you do counts. The biggest mistake that people make is they think that only what they want to count counts. No. When you read a book, when you listen to an audio program, when you go to a course, 
when you go to bed early and get up early and you work, it all counts. And it's all going on the plus side of your ledger. You must assume that you already are what you want to be and then live by faith in this assumption. You don't need evidence of your senses. You have a tendency to believe that what your eyes and ears tell you is reality. But this is what we know by our senses. You know, it's like a, a millionth of a millimeter. And all that is unknown is in the invisible, in the imagination. You'll see it when you believe it, not the other way around. People will say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. It doesn't work that way. You'll see it when inside you have a knowing. And most of our attention is focused on, this is my beliefs and my disbeliefs about what is possible, what isn't possible, are here. And it's an endless, an endless universe. Most people don't focus on their mindset. Most people are focused on exterior factors. They think that everything that happens to them is by chance and they don't realize that a lot of the things that happen to them are things that they attract. Because you attract the things that you are, and you are what you do, and you do what you think about. So it's all a cyclical loop. Most people don't understand the power of the mind, that's why they haven't tapped into the power of the mind. And the power of the mind is one very simple thing. The ability to direct your attention towards a specific given objective, and then to have the willpower to pursue it. I've learned that so much of the anxiety that holds us back in life, it's self-inflicted. We make it worse on ourselves. These scars, they're not just a reminder of everything I've been through, but more so everything that's in front of me. They stare me in my face, challenging me to be myself. But I bet you've got some scars. And my hope for you is this, look at them own them they're the best reminder you'll ever have that there's a whole world out there and we've got a whole lot of living left to do what if i told you the secret to a fulfilled life lies at the intersection of four simple questions the japanese call it ikigai it's where four things meet what you love what you're good at what you can be paid for and what the world needs when these align you've found your ikigai if you're looking to discover higher purpose in life First answer these four components. The people who are listening who, you know, who do have, you know, that doesn't feel like they can change the circumstances with the way they think or they feel, just hold on. Just endure. Endure, you know. Uh, look at things differently. Challenge yourself to look at things as the glass half full. Challenge yourself to think four steps ahead. We all share the same space, striving for a better life. Same as the tree that grows closer to the sun, or the salmon that swims upstream to spawn. We are all striving for a better life, to be the best that we can be. Not only for ourselves, but for those we love. Because at the root of it all, that's all that we do it for. Love. And without it, nothing really matters. Taking risks with the intention to build yourself up is the best thing that you can do. When you're so eager to live the life you want, there is nothing that can stand in the way from you achieving that. A powerful quote that I've read, you should make decisions based upon your future self and not make decisions which your current self already manifests. So if you are in a tough situation, good. You're learning, developing, and building the characteristics that you'll need for future challenges. Never apologize for being who you want to become. Remember, keep taking risks and decisions that the 2.0 version of yourself would do and see your current reality fall into pieces and chaos, knowing deep down there's something waiting for you. You try to drive in the future using a rear view mirror to guide yourself, I got news for you, you're gonna crash. You have to be able to look forward and create what you want, even if you've never been able to do it before. If you just tried it and it didn't work, this moment is new. Something about you is new. You made a new distinction, something you may be unaware of. Maybe the environment's changed. Maybe you just need to change your approach. But you gotta believe that you can, because the only reason to say you can't is you think you've tried everything, which is a why, or you believe that it just has never worked before. The past does not equal the future unless you live there. 
If you live in the past, then I guarantee your future will be the same way. You cannot be humble if you do not know your power. If you do not know your power, you're not humble, you're just afraid. The only person that can be truly humble is the person that knows their strength and knows their power and chooses it to serve, chooses to empower, not overpower. I know things have been difficult lately, and I'm sorry about that. I think I know what you're feeling. You've been living with so many unresolved things. Well, take it from an old man. Those things send us down the road. They make us who we are. And if anyone's destined for greatness, it's you, son. You owe the world your gifts. You just have to figure out how to use them and know that wherever they take you, we'll always be here. Your life is your life. Don't let it be clubbed into dank submission. Be on the watch. There are ways out. There is light somewhere. It may not be much light, but it beats the darkness. Be on the watch. You can't beat death, but you can beat death in life sometimes. And the more often you learn to do it, the more light there will be. Your life is your life. Know it while you have it. You are marvelous. Your conscious, that person inside is telling you, we gotta do better than this. That version of yourself that's banging and screaming to get out. We're better than this. Why have we settled for mediocrity? Don't you remember that child within? Don't you remember that dreamer? Don't you remember that person who was building spaceships out of cardboard boxes? Don't you remember? I'm dying to get out. Please let me out. I'm suffocating and soon I'm gonna die forever. Consistency is not your problem. The reason you cannot make any progress in reaching that goal is because you have a lack of belief in that you will succeed in whatever it is you are after. If someone told you that if you do this, this, and this, each and every day, you will achieve your dreams in one year, and it was 100% guaranteed and you fully believed in that. You wouldn't for a second hesitate to do those things. You would show up every single day, regardless of how you feel, because you know that you will win in the end. But there is a voice in your head that tells you, you might not pull this off. You very may well put in all of this effort and endure all of this struggle just to fall short. And in fact, 99% of people don't succeed. So who are you to think that you will? You must know where this voice stems from. This voice is evil's attempt at manipulating and deceiving you to lose faith in the power that you possess, to lose sight of what you are truly capable of. But you cannot fail. When people say, I fear the unknown, I'm like, no. Because if it's unknown, you can't fear it. What people fear is what their brain is automatically projecting into the unknown. So they're fearing the imagination, which is usually a reflection of their history that they are accepted, which is now that avoidant energy, past hurt informs future fear. You're not scared of the unknown, you're scared of what your brain is thinking, knowing might happen. You begin to train yourself to be aware of what you're thinking. And, and one of the ways to do that is to periodically say to yourself, what am I thinking? Would I like this thought to create my life? Would I like to have the experience that this thought could bring to me? Now, it takes a while to do that, 
But even if we could begin on the smallest level to be aware of our thinking, we can start to make change. I feel like a big reason why a lot of people don't learn how to forgive others nowadays is because they never forgive themselves for past mistakes. If you don't, if you don't know how to forgive yourself, how are you ever going to forgive somebody else? It's just not, not going to work. And I think giving yourself that that grace and compassion to understand that you know you did the best you could when you were there, and that's not you anymore. You know, so now that you know better, do better. The last 6,000 years reads like this, opportunity mixed with difficulty. That's how it reads. It isn't going to change. The man says, well, if it isn't going to change, how will my life ever change? Answer, when you change. The only way it gets better for you is when you get better. If you could live forever, would you? My outlook on this is, if you buy a bouquet of flowers and hand them to your loved one and the bouquet the flowers are made of plastic how would your loved one reply to that they probably think you don't love them but you say but darling they'll last forever the fact that flowers die is the very reason why they have meaning as a gift you're handed flowers they're gonna be dead in seven days that means, you know, you better pay attention to them. You're going to smell them. You're going to take care of them. And you're going to put it in a central place so that not only you see them, but so does everybody else. You're going to celebrate those flowers. My knowledge that I'm going to die gives not only meaning to my being alive, it gives urgency to it. Today, I want to talk about the most powerful tool you have in your arsenal. The power to never give up. Life, as we know it, is a series of peaks and valleys, highs and lows, victories and setbacks. It's a journey that tests our limits, challenges our resolve, and demands resilience. Imagine you are on a path towards your greatest dream. You can see it in the distance, but the journey is fraught with obstacles. There are moments when the path seems impossible to traverse, where the challenges feel insurmountable and the temptation to quit looms large. It's in these moments, my friends, where your true character is forged. Every setback, every failure, every hurdle is not a roadblock but a stepping stone. It's an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to become stronger. The thing is, is that people, maybe it's you, are waiting for this perfect moment, but it doesn't come. It happens the moment you decide that you're fed up with waiting and decide to take action. And it only becomes the perfect moment when you look back on it. When you want more for yourself, when you want more out of life, when you want more success, when you want more wins, everyone thinks they gotta add more. To get more, you need to add more. Well, let me tell you something. The more you want, the more you want to achieve, it's not always about the addition. It's more about the subtraction. It's more about the delete. Every single person that's ever been successful, every single person that's ever made something of themselves has at one point or another made a mistake. They've done something wrong. They've fallen off the path. And I'm sure you have too. But what makes those people exceptional, what separates those people from everyone else is when they make a mistake, when they make an error, when they do something wrong, they recognize that they did it, they admit that they did it, and they get back on the right path. 
When you feel like giving up, remember why you started. Recall the passion that ignited your journey, the dreams that fuel your ambition. Success is not reserved for the chosen few. It's for those who are relentless, who persevere despite the odds, who refuse to accept defeat. Look at the great achievers in history, from athletes who have overcome injuries to win championships, to scientists who have defied conventional wisdom to make groundbreaking discoveries. Their common thread is not extraordinary talent, but extraordinary perseverance. You are capable of achieving greatness. The road may be long and the challenges may be many, but your determination can conquer them all. Embrace the difficulties, for they are the fires that temper the steel of your spirit. Let every failure be a lesson, every setback a setup for a comeback, and every doubt a fuel for your drive. Believe in yourself, even when it seems no one else does. Trust that you have within you the strength, the courage, and the resilience to achieve your dreams. Remember that quitting is never an option. It's just a detour that leads you away from your destiny. So, stand tall in the face of adversity. Keep pushing, keep fighting, and never, ever give up. Your perseverance will pave the way to your success. Your journey may be tough, but the reward will be worth it. You are unstoppable. You are resilient. You are destined for greatness. You can change your life just by making the decision to do so. Make the choice to surround yourself with people who take action and set high standards. Choose to be better. The first step to changing your life starts with a single choice. Let that decision ignite a series of actions, each one a catalyst for massive transformation. In the simplicity of a single choice lies the potential to change your life. Make the right decision, your future self is counting on you. Happiness is not a byproduct of ease. Happiness is a byproduct of struggle. Intensity, consistency, discipline, doing hard things on a regular basis. I've said this before, every single thing you want in life is on the other side of something that sucks, of hundreds of things that suck. So the willingness to endure that struggle every single day and understand that it's an act of service for your future self and for the future that you're trying to build, that is how you build durable, lasting, sustainable happiness. In time, you will realize that everything unfolded exactly as it needed to. The timing of events, the doors that closed, and the ones that never opened were all part of a greater plan. The tragedy, the moments of despair, the times in your life when it seemed like everything was against you. These are not happenings of mere coincidence. This is much more personal than that. You were under attack by an evil force that was sent to defeat you, to dishearten you, to strip you of your faith. What does that mean to you? That this force has inflicted harm upon you, like a middle school bully pushing their target to the ground. What will you do? Will you get back up? Will you push back? Or will you lie there on the floor to be mocked and pitied? But do not forget that you possess an energy far greater than any, as it is the origin of all that exists, including evil. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. Life gets better from here. You grow from this moment. You glow in this moment. You go forward from this moment. Life gets better from here. You're so stuck on focusing on what you're experiencing here that you never focus on what is there for you. What are you here to do? Are you here to kind of exist in this comfortably numb, interquartile range, middle period thing of life? Or do you want to make some f***ing waves? I want to make some waves. I want to do something that I look back on and I go, yeah, I actually, I made that happen out of nothing. 
I had an impact, I left a dent. And that's not going to happen if you're sitting in good but not great. And that's fine for a lot of people, but that's probably not for you. And unfortunately, the discomfort, which includes potentially letting go of a good life to risk getting a uncertain great life is one of those prices that you have to pay. And that's why so few people do it. But if you want to do it, that's a step that you have to take. You could boil down the problem with humans into one line. It's the fact that they're always taking the path of least resistance. They don't want to put effort, and it requires effort to strategize, to think of your opponent, to think of what makes them different. It takes strategy to think of what will persuade them, what will get people to join your cause. It takes effort to get outside of yourself, to see how other people might view it. But we don't want to do that. We want to just be lazy and just assume that everyone's on our side. Life is not going to look like someone else's, and it's quite honestly, not gonna take the same amount of time as someone else either. And I think that is the hardest truth to swallow because we see someone our age, someone that looks like us, does things like us, and we think if they can do it and I fit those criteria, I check off those check boxes of who they are and how they are, I should be there. No, the life that you wanna create is not that far out of reach. Like, just like that, you can, you can have the life that you want, but if you believe that you can't, you can. Your life and your growth has to be stored up before it shows up. So when you see somebody that's done something very well, they didn't just start practicing on that yesterday. You're never good the first time. They've been consistent. And because of their consistency, they've arrived to a level that begins to show and display growth and excellence. And that's what I want for you. You know, so many people look to their right and left or look at their peers or look at the people they grew up it with and decide what they want in life based on what other people want in life. So often, the things we aspire to aren't even things we've even asked ourselves if we want to aspire to. It's just what everyone wants. This is your life. It's crucial that you design it as you see fit. A lot of us are asking for permission to do things we already have permission to do. We're waiting for the right opportunity, the right set of tumblers to fall in just the right order before we activate the things we're doing. Think of this, we're rivers, we're not reservoirs. And we're not here to store up all of neither our fears uh, nor our ambitions, but that we're rivers to let everything flow out into the world. But to say, you know what? I'm gonna move from thinking about it to doing something about it. In life, folks, you cannot change your life unless you change something. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Of confidence is the foundation of everything that you want in life. Without it, you will always hold yourself back. You will continue to doubt your abilities and hesitate when opportunities arise. But when you have self-confidence, everything changes. You stop asking for permission to pursue your dream, your vision. Instead, you just go. You stop seeking validation from others because you already know your worth. Mastering self-confidence means learning to trust yourself, even when no one else does. It means believing that you are capable of more, even when the entire world is telling you to settle. And once you master this, I promise you there is nothing in this world that you cannot achieve. Because confidence, when it is real, cannot be shaken. Most people underestimate how necessary their existence is in the world. And as a result, assume a posture of resignation that leaves the world less than what it could be. Our lives are not random, they are not coincidences. We were all given these lives to make the world better. And I feel like most people underestimate how necessary they are. And as a result, they don't, they don't take their thoughts seriously. But if we truly ever tapped into the high value of our breath, and it would quite literally make the world a better place. 
Michael Jordan missed 26 game-winning shots. He lost the game for his team 26 times. You're gonna fuck up a lot. And you're gonna lose the, the game for your team a lot. But it ain't really about the ones that are the most talented. It's the ones that never fucking quit. And yeah, talent's a real thing. But if you combine talent with somebody who doesn't quit, but what I'm saying to you is, you fucked up, all right? Okay, get up off the floor. If you could still breathe, if you could go like this and it's going, you're in the game. So just fucking play. Our brain attaches to negative things. We have to train it to look at the positive things. Stop asking the questions of what's wrong with this or what can be fixed. Start asking the questions of like, what's right about this? What opportunity is this failure going to show me? I'm telling you, just start thinking those thoughts. You gotta train your brain. It doesn't matter what challenges it is that you are facing there. It is the fundamental principle behind it that you do not run away that you are open for everything that is being thrown at you. I didn't ask for an easy life. I take what comes. The price of progress is pain. The price of progress is pain. 2024 is not going to be any different than 2023. If you're no different in 2024 than you were in 2023, things do not get better because of a new year. They get better because of a new you. You don't just change a calendar page. You don't just change a date. You have to change you. The date doesn't mean nothing. You can be as bad today as you were yesterday. You can be as unhappy today as you were yesterday, regardless of what the date on the calendar is. Determine what it is need to be changed. Determine what it is you're going to replace that with. If there's something inside of you that you don't like, a behavior, an emotion, a thought, it's not you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's a pattern. And we can develop patterns and do them so often that we think we're our patterns. It's just a habit, a habit of thinking, a habit of emotion. It's a pattern. You can change any pattern when you stop thinking there's something wrong with you. You're going to lose sleep. You'll doubt whether it'll work. You'll stress to make ends meet. You won't finish your to-do list. You'll wonder whether you made the right call and have no way to know for years. This is what hard feels like, and that's okay. Everything worth doing is hard, and the more worth doing it is, the harder it is. The greater the payoff, the greater the hardship. If it's hard, good. It means no one else will do it. More for you. Oh man, your struggle is what made you who you are now. Your life was basically the perfect grounds for training for where you need to go in your life. You have these tools. You were training for this stuff, man. You have the advantage of everybody else. It was the absolute perfect training ground for you to go to where you need to go. Embrace the labels they put on you. People might call you obsessed. Let them. First they'll ask you why. Then they'll ask you how. It's only crazy until it's not. Your progress will be a direct reflection of your hard work. Stay true to your beliefs. Make self-improvement a priority. And just keep going. You know for a in fact, in your mind, yeah, I should probably be doing it. And then you don't do it anymore. You just cheat yourself. If you got something that you want, what is stopping you from getting it? You gotta realize that you're in complete control, right? You're behind the wheel every fucking day. Never going to be able to understand how your mind works if you don't spend any time in it. If you wanna make long-term change, you have to learn how your mind tries to stop you from doing it. Your mind doesn't want you to change. It wants you to stay where you're at. It wants you to stay comfortable. So when you get uncomfortable, it starts telling you lies. It says, this is dangerous, you're tired, you're injured, something's wrong. But the problem is you never get to know that it's bullshit. Because the minute you get uncomfortable, you start hearing that voice and you start listening to it. And you run away from it. You have to live with it that resistance. You have to get comfortable in that resistance. That moment right there is the only moment where you can learn how to master your mind. Because if you want to master it, you have to understand it. And you can't understand it if you don't put it to the test. Don't sink the ship right now. Just keep your head above water. 
maintain and to try and hold on. And uh, hopefully give yourself a chance to notice the magic, the mystical. Self-doubt grows when you engage in negative talk to talk yourself out of the things you want to be trying. There is so much pain in talking yourself out of trying things. And it just makes me so sad and frustrated to see so many of you that are listening, really feeling this desire to try something and putting all your energy, all your energy into talking yourself out of it. I want to remind you that where you are in life right now is not who you are, okay? Who you were has created the life that you're living right now, but who you are is a different version of yourself. You have felt pain. You have learned lessons, hopefully. You have gone through things that that previous self didn't know or hadn't experienced. And now you are equipped with a different perspective, with different skills, and a better understanding of what decisions need to be made to change the outcome that you are currently living in. Sometimes you have to get away from certain people and things to actually start believing in you, to actually start knowing who you are, to get clear on your visions clear on your dreams and your goals in life you know and sometimes that takes isolation you know but so often we strip ourselves from the gifts of that isolation because we're so focused on how lonely we are we're so focused on how we don't have anybody to relate to we're so focused on how we just feel like nobody's there for us what if that time you can be using to get clear on who you are to get clear on the things that you want to do, to get clear on your goals, you know, to start believing in yourself, to start having a real relationship with yourself. Think that everything the mind tells you, I need to follow, that means freedom. No, for us, it's the other way around. To learn and not follow what the mind tells you. This is the first step towards freedom. Well, what if I experience failure? Well, what if you experience fortune? And I want you to think about that because fear of failure and laughter and stumbling and things not working out often causes us not even to take the first step that creates the momentum. And as you know, small daily, seemingly insignificant steps over time when done consistently lead to stunning results. And so often we won't take the first step because we're afraid of failure. What if I fail? Well, I'm suggesting to you, what if you win? Motions are powerful. Sometimes it doesn't take much to alter your whole life direction. Number one, disgust. Powerful emotion. Disgust says, I had had it. See, that could be the day. The day you can say, I've had it. And whether you've had it with something small or something major, the day you can say, I've had it, may not be the day it ends, but the day it begins. Powerful day. You need to go to war with the demons inside your head. Go to war with that little voice inside your head that tells you that you'll never be anything. 
that you're not good enough. The voice in your head that wants you to be lazy, that wants you to be scared, that wants you to worry about what other people might think or what other people might say. The one that tells you, oh, you're just gonna do this tomorrow. The one that says today you can do whatever feels good, but tomorrow I'm gonna be a changed man. That is not a voice to negotiate with. That is not a voice to be influenced by. That is a voice that you declare war on. That voice does not deserve a seat at the table. If you do what it says, that voice will get louder and louder until it takes control. But if you do the opposite of what it says, it will get quieter and quieter until you don't hear it at all. Worst feeling in the world is to be facing death and to think, damn it, I've wasted my life. And I want people out there to realize that if you're 20s and your 30s, you don't want to reach that point. You don't want to waste your time and become 55, 58, have a stroke, face death. And what have you done? Nothing. You've moved from job to job. You tried this, you tried that with half an energy. You really have nothing to look back on. That's the worst feeling. It's not what you do, it's who you are. It's not what's going to get you there, it's what's going to keep you there. Do what's right, not what's easy. You know what I'm saying? It's not what you do, it's who you are, right? It's not what got you there, it's what's going to keep you there. Do what's right, not what's easy. You know that the lotus, one of the most beautiful flowers, grows in a swamp. We've all heard of post-traumatic stress, right? But there's also a phenomenon known as post-traumatic growth. And so often it is our most difficult experiences that put us in a crucible that transform us. I have grown the most from my most painful times. When I'm going through them, I'm not going to tell you that I enjoy them. But you want to allow pain to serve you. What happened to you? The pain, the hurt, the struggle? It didn't make you better. You made you better. The struggle didn't make you who you are. It's because of who you are that you were able to turn a struggle into opportunity. You chose growth over pain, to build character instead of walls, to expand your heart instead of hardening to the world. You kept loving, kept trusting. You chose resilience and vulnerability when it would have been a hell of a lot easier to shut down and shut it all out. You chose to remain kind and soft in the face of cruelty. The exact same cruelty that could have turned you into someone that you're not. And with that, let's give credit where credit's due. That's all you. You're stuck and unsure about what to do with your life? Stop overcomplicating it. Money, titles, and approval from others are the wages of being a person of value. Ask yourself one question. What problem do I care about solving? Because here's the truth. Money follows value, and value comes from solving real problems. So find something that bothers you, something you can't stop thinking about, and go all in on solving that. That's where fulfillment, success, and meaning are found. If you don't learn this and keep wandering aimlessly, you're doing yourself a massive disservice. So when you love yourself, you do better work, you eat better. When you love yourself, you install the habits of mastery. When you love yourself, you treat people with civility and politeness. When you love yourself, you don't give up on your mighty mission. When you love yourself, you celebrate your ambitions. When you love yourself, you walk your talk and you speak with your voice and you trust your innovation and you honor your creativity. Self-love is a huge generating force of world class. The path of personal development is befriending uncertainty. Almost all decisions that you make in the beginning, you have incomplete data and you have to make decisions anyways. And so it's growing comfortable with taking your best bad guess and being directionally correct rather than searching for a perfect answer because a perfect answer assumes perfect information, which you could only have after you begin. And so in some ways, making a decision is the perfect answer so that you can get the information to then improve the quality of the decision later. And I think that one loop is what a lot of people miss out on is that they spend, they obsess for years sometimes on the perfect pick, the perfect business, the perfect job, the perfect mate, when most of the times beginning each step illuminates the next step which means the information, the feedback that you get from walking gives you more about where to walk 
than trying to sit at the beginning in the darkness and pick a direction. Impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in a world that they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. So I know why you go on Instagram. I know why you, because you just have the time. You have the time because you don't want to put that time into bettering oneself. You start going after your goals and you start achieving them. People will start looking at you differently and secretly they will start hoping that you fail because it will make them feel better about the action they have never taken. Progression is an ugly road that leads to a beautiful place. And the sad thing about that quote that's true, is most people never get to that beautiful place because they never persevere. They give up before it's their time. They quit before they see their breakthrough. That's why I love a breaking point, because at a breaking point, that fork in the road, you got a choice. You can break down or you can break through. And when you choose to break through, those adversities strengthen you. All those things that have come against you, it strengthens you. That's why you gotta find a meaning, a mission that carries you through this stage of resistance. Get started and stay consistent. You have things to share with the world that only you can deliver. But you'll never experience them if all you replay in your mind are doubts and excuses on why going after your dreams now isn't a good time. You have what it takes. Get out of your own way. Don't count yourself out yet. Everything you want to achieve is possible. It might take time effort and discipline, but it's all within reach. So if you're in the woods and you don't know where to go, start walking. You gotta start walking because the perspective is not gonna change. You have to start moving forward. You have to tar start taking steps in order to improve your vision, improve your perspective, change your perspective, make some kind of progress. And worst case scenario, you figure out that you walked the wrong direction, okay? Now you can walk in the other direction, and that's, that's going to be fine. But standing there lost and not doing anything is just waiting to die, waiting to starve to death. The only thing in life that stands between you, everything you've ever wanted to do, is doing it. Not preparing to do it, not scheduling time to do it, not telling people you're going to do it, not reading books about how to do it, not watching videos about how to do it, but instead, actually doing it. There's a saying, there's a quote that I really believe in, that when the pain of the current reality becomes greater than the fear of change, that's when we change. So like when you become, that when the pain becomes so intense that it's greater than the fear that you have of the unknown, then you'll go into the unknown. You can stand there at the door looking at this abyss, but when it becomes so painful that you walk into that, that's when the change happens. But there's a hell of a lot more to you than you think, like way more. Enough to cope with the trouble of the world inside you. There's enough to cope with the trouble of the world. And you, if you had enough courage, you could let that out. Enough courage and faith, you could, you could let that out. And everything would be better in, because of it. Only fail because they get caught up into what winning was. You're supposed to fail at some point in time. You're supposed to, you're supposed to get knocked down a couple of times. You're That's supposed to lose. You That's how you learn. Perfection is only a word because imperfection was discovered. You can't be perfect without knowing what imperfect is. You have to experience imperfection at some point to go, now I'm perfect. I feel something is shifted. Some people are not strong enough to adapt to the change. Some people don't know how to put it into practice in order to go with the change. There will come the time, and it's not gonna take long, where a natural separation is gonna take place. A natural separation. The ones that are able to read the signs, that are able to go with what is happening, to adapt to the changes this world is bringing to us, they will move on to another world. Other people that are unwilling 
unable, may be incapable of adapting to the coming changes. It is simple like this. They will stay with the old world, which is about to end. An eagle flies at a certain altitude, and the only other bird flies at that altitude is another eagle. So if he find himself flocking with pigeons, he may be flying too low. One of the things limiting you from your income, your impact, a world-class life. You care too much about what people think about you. You can be world-class, you can fit in with the world, you don't get to do both. One thing I've learned is everyone has an opinion. Why let the opinions of other people deny you from a life that will make history? This is my question to you. When you gonna free yourself? How long are you gonna stay in this pain expecting change to happen in your life? How long are you gonna stay in this situation expecting things to change in your life? You've been here for the last year, the last five years, the last decade, staying in the same mess, accepting the same mess, and wonder why you're stressed, wonder why you're not happy, wonder why you're not fulfilled, wonder why you're not experiencing the life that you deserve to experience. When you gonna free yourself from the pain? When you gonna free yourself from selling for less? Because I want to tell you right now, you don't have to accept it. I know you know that, but I need you to feel that, understand that. You don't got to accept it. You don't have to stay where you're just tolerated and not celebrated. You don't have to stay where you're not happy. You don't have to stay where you're not being better. You don't have to stay where you're suffering. You can free yourself from it. To get anything of value, you have to sacrifice. Do you know that the harder thing to do and the right thing to do are usually the same thing? Easy doesn't enter into grown-up life. Now you're going to be disappointed. Let me put this in here. When this doesn't work out, you know, just as you've planned, you're going to be disappointed. But here's what you must learn to do as a leader. Learn to discipline your disappointment. Be disappointed, but don't let it kid you. You've just got to understand, sometimes the seed falls on shallow ground. And it didn't say what to do about the shallow ground. It just said, that's the way it is. Because you're sad, now you're going to make a bunch of bad decisions because you're sad. No, no, it doesn't, doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You're sad, okay. You get emotional sometimes, okay. Got it. Now, get control of your emotions and carry on with your life. And sometimes you're going to get hit with those waves. And that's okay. I'm having an emotional moment right now. There's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. The other extreme is, oh, I'm letting my emotions run my life and I'm making a bunch of bad decisions. And my excuse is, well, you know, I lost some friends or I had this traumatic experience happen to me. That's why I'm doing, that's just an excuse. And it's a very easy excuse. And you can't act like that. Your expectations define your happiness more than your circumstances. If you only wished to be happy, this could be easily accomplished. But we wish to be happier than other people, and this is always difficult, for we believe others are happier than they are. Because only doing the thing is doing the thing. When I say do, don't think, I don't mean you shouldn't think at all. I mean, of course, some thought is necessary. But don't let that thinking turn into overthinking. It's so easy to get caught up in planning and worrying that you never actually take the first step. It might not go as planned, and you may even mess it up. But that's part of the process. You try, you mess it up, you reassess, and then you go again. So, let's just start. Even if it feels messy, you've got this. You can go from failure to success, but you can't go from excuses to success. Just always exceed X. Do more than what anyone else would ever expect out of you. That's who we are. I think everything about discipline. Everything about discipline and every day. And every day, every day, like, you know, train, sleep, eat, repeat. It's have to become your lifestyle and everything here in mental, you know? Everything about mental, you know, it's like, when you become champion, what you feel like? And I said, no, in my mind, I was always champion. You are more powerful than you believe. If you were experiencing some sort of discomfort at the moment, whether that be stress, sadness, 
or uncertainty, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, the power, the essence within you, your soul will overcome this. You will prevail and rise above the unbearable state that you are currently in. And I understand that you may be asking when, when will you be alleviated from this discomfort? But you must know that regardless of when, the hurt that you feel right now serves no other purpose than to strengthen you. So whether it is today or tomorrow, every single moment that you sit with this, you are growing, becoming a version of yourself that is stronger and wiser than ever before. There may also be a part of you that says it will never end, that you will never find the answer. But you must know, you always find the answer. I want you to imagine a bustling city undergoing a grand renovation. Streets that once thrummed with daily life are now cloaked in scaffolding and echo with the sounds of construction. Familiar landmarks fade into the mist of renovation. The city's pulse seems to falter as old paths are closed and the landscape shifts. Yet this tumultuous symphony of transformation is not mere noise. As the dust settles, the city will emerge not just altered, but reborn. If you're thinking, what's this got to do with me? Then listen to this. In your journey of self-improvement, you might find that your personal renovation disrupts established routines and, most especially, relationships. When this happens, I want you to remember that city. It evolved to better serve its inhabitants, even if they didn't realize it. Your growth is reshaping your life to support new and improved opportunities. This isn't an anomaly. It's a natural consequence of your progress. Growth doesn't come from nowhere. It's not like you wake up one day and you're a new person. Growth is gradual, and the potential to be your greatest self has always existed inside of you. You're not suddenly a new person for going through change. You're just more evolved. What happens is that with time, you learn to embrace everything about you, and you start to show the world who you truly were all along. If you want the future to change for you, you've got to change. If you don't change, the next six years of your life is going to be just like the last six. You'll still be behind on your bills. You'll still be behind on your promises. If you will change, everything will change for you. If you will get better, everything will get better for you. If you'll change your philosophy, if you'll change your habits, if you'll refine your thinking, if you'll change and accept some new disciplines, if you'll turn the corner, where you've been in the past, go for a new life for the future. All kinds of remarkable things will happen for you if you will change. Biggest mistake a person can do is to give up. You might not reach the best, best version of yourself in this lifetime, but a better one than you are right now. Remember, you won't get everything you want. Simply sometimes it hails on your crop and rains on your parade. It's that kind of planet. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it, handle it. Thoughts aren't true. Feelings don't require actions. Things aren't good or bad, they just are. Our greatest enemy is ignorance. To change your life, change your surroundings. Our actions, not our pasts, define who we are. The willingness to be disliked is a superpower. If you develop the willingness to be disliked, you will inevitably have the courage to do the hard things that most people are not willing to do. This will then imbue your life with a sense of meaning and importance. It will also lead to success that others will be too intimidated to go after. But I would go even further than this. I would argue that until you're comfortable with the disapproval of others, you are not truly a free individual yourself. You must develop the ability to be disliked in order to free yourself from the prison of other people's opinions. Learn to do what's right, even if others think it might be wrong. Learn to tolerate criticism and negative feedback because that's what will make you better. Learn to be laughed at, hated on and trolled because if you can become comfortable with the hate, you'll be f***ing unstoppable. It's like you, I was filled with anxiety and I still am filled with anxiety to this day. 
But I, I think the right thing to do is not to run away from the anxiety, but to lean into it and uh, channel it into pursuing with everything you got, the things you're passionate about. And it may turn out in the end that your life will have unexpected chapters. But as long as you're chasing dreams and goals with absolute, unwavering dedication, good stuff will come of it. We all get to choose what hard are we going to have. Are we going to have the hard of creating and becoming and being a great example for everybody else, honoring the people who came before us and setting a great example for the people coming after us? Or are we going to cruise? Or are we going to coast? Or are we just going to be another poor little me? Another person that dies with all the hopes and dreams and amazing ideas that could have helped people while you were here. Who says at the end of their life, I coulda, I should have, I wish I had. Or are you going to be the person that says at the end of their life, I fucking did it. The greats do things when they don't always want to. And I think that's what separates good from great. Master self-discipline. Become the person that regardless of how you feel, you can consistently go through the motions. Be the person that you can count on. Do it because you said that you would, because it is what will get you closer to obtaining legacy. Operate like a finely tuned, highly efficient machine, continuously making improvements through trial and error. Do this until the day comes that you can operate optimally without even having to think about it, without any effort because you were just that good, that finely tuned. When you reach this level of performance, the rate at which you improve skyrockets exponentially and you will be soaring past the achievements that you once believed to be impossible. But you have to get over this first hump. Think of this as life or death, because this is the difference between you continuing to be stuck in the cycle versus actually living the life that you dream of. Self-discovery is the path to self-mastery and true craftsmanship, daily practice, something you do every single day to fire up those neurons, you understand? This will help you realize your edge, what makes you unique, and give you the confidence to not give a damn because you know who you are. Because let me tell you something, you're gonna get a lot of flowers, you're gonna get a lot of praise, but you're gonna get hate too. It's better to be hated for who you truly are than adored for who you truly aren't. No amount of external approval will make up for the inevitable lack of fulfillment that comes from trying to be someone that you're not. True love and connection require authenticity. Without it, there's only dishonest attachment. You should be viewing every single thing that happens in your life as a learning experience. Every good thing you do, every bad thing you do, the things you do to people, the things people do to you. Regardless of the situation, there is always something embedded in there that you can use to make you better. And if you do that, if you view every single interaction, every single situation that you encounter as a learning experience, you will never lose because most people are just coasting through life, completely asleep at the wheel, not paying attention to anything that goes on, not looking for lessons, not trying to improve. And they view every single situation that they encounter as just what happens to them. And those people will always blame two things before they ever blame themselves. They will blame someone else or their circumstances. And if you can just skip those two and look for the thing that you could do better in every single situation, you will always win no matter what. All the worry, all the pressure and expectation that you're trying to live up to, where is it taking you? All the fake rules in your head that you're living by, what's the end goal? The imaginary milestones in your head are just that, imaginary. And think about it this way, you've already achieved goals that you once said would make you happy. So instead of predicating your happiness on these external achievements, become a person who is fully committed to working towards all the things that you want in life, regardless of timeline, and most importantly, enjoying the process. Chances are you're more likely to find the success that you want through the pursuit of happiness rather than happiness through the pursuit of success. Remember that one. 
price to pay for everything, and that includes inaction. That includes not doing anything. There's a consequence to pay for just sitting there in your thoughts, in your feelings, not running, not chasing after you want, not going after your dreams. There's a consequence to listening to the opinions of people that don't even know what you have inside. There's a consequence. You better study consequences of people before you that didn't act on the things they wanted to truly act on. There's a consequence. So I weigh the consequences. You need to understand that for 90% of the journey, you will not see the port. But you can trust that if you do the right actions, you'll eventually get there. And it's the same thing with life. You must understand that most of the time you won't see the fruit of your labor for an extended period of time. But then once you hit the 99%, you begin to see the port of destination, the port of arrival. And then you catch the second wind to maximize on the momentum. For 99% of the journey, where most of you guys are at right now, you will not see the port of destination, but you must trust it. But what if things work out and everything turns out better than you imagined? What if things change? Life has a funny way of unfolding sometimes, so don't give up. Wake up every single day knowing that you're one step away from success. Anything is possible if you're willing to work for it. Just stick with it a little longer. What do you have to lose? Study yourself, make yourself better. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Learn from them. Don't change who you are to become somebody else. Think about the time that you spend in your life trying to be somebody you're not. If you put that time and effort and energy into being who you were and who you are, how much farther along would you be in life? Six months. You got six months left in the year. Why don't you take those six months and donate that time to your future self? Why don't you commit to something that you're going to thank yourself for doing six months from today? Because when January 1st rolls around, you can either be six months closer to your goals or you can be exactly where you are right now, if not a little further away. You can either get to January 1st and be so pissed off about what you did the previous six months that you feel like you have to change your whole personality with a whole list of resolutions, or you can get to January January 1st and have things be going so well that you feel like you don't have to change anything at all. Consistency compounds. When consistency compounds, you get a good life. Many times people want to rush. They want to accelerate the journey, but they don't understand that the journey is lifelong. There is no end goal. There is no end destination. You are in this journey from the moment you were born until you die. So today is just another what? brick that you're laying to build your ideal house. What's that deep rooted reason? So when fear shows up, when failure shows up, when haters show up, when the numbers ain't going right show up, what's gonna keep you committed? What's gonna keep you consistent? You've been consistent in a lot of stuff in life. Are you trying to say that you can't be consistent at something that you love? You can't be consistent at your dreams? You can't be consistent at something that means the world to you? You've been consistent at the wrong things. You've been consistent at pleasing people. You've been consistent at working for somebody else. And you're telling me you can't bring that same energy to what you called to do? Come on. I'm going to tell you this, bro. There is no getting out of the work. There's no shortcuts. There is no easy route. And there is no quick fix to becoming the greatest version of yourself. The longer that you avoid the hard work, the more comfortable you get in life. Is stay comfortable in the depression, stay comfortable in the situation that you're in right now. Because when you're comfortable, you lose motivation, you lose focus, you lose sight of your goals, you lose sight of where you want to be at in life. You have the ability to make those changes. There is no difference between you and successful people. The difference is what they do. Your life is created by what you do, your daily habits. Your daily habits determine what your life is going to look like. Who you surround yourself with determines what your life is going to look like. If tomorrow wouldn't promise, what would you give for today? Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today? Think about it. We get one opportunity in life, one chance in life to do whatever you're going to do, to lay your foundation, to make whatever more you're going to make, whatever legacy you're going to leave, leave your legacy, and it's found through effort.
Where's the hoes that's coming down with us? But ever, nobody can judge you. Because ever is between you and you. Ever ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Uh, go for the discipline because it weighs ounces. Uh, the regret weighs tons. 95% of our decisions are made by how you feel in the moment. And that is the problem. Do you feel like making that cold call? No, you don't. Do you feel like doing that third set of reps? No, you don't. And if you accept the fact that you may never feel ready and you may never feel motivated and you may never feel courageous and that's okay, but you can still push yourself forward. As you start to see yourself becoming the person that takes action, guess what happens? You build the skill of confidence and courage. You think that everything the mind tells you, I need to follow. That means freedom. No, for us, it's the other way around. To learn and not follow what the mind tells you. This is the first step towards freedom. You have to constantly rewrite your book every day of your life. These are conversations I have with myself and I say it everywhere I go. The most important conversation when you have with yourself. You live with it every single day. But most of our conversations are not the right ones. They're not the ones that are going to push us to the place we need to go. They're the ones that are going to keep us sitting in that toxic environment that you've helped create and everybody else helped create and you just live in it. And that conversation just plays in your head. That becomes you. Working on yourself, talking to yourself. That's so very important. Overcoming the negative conversation, that inner dialogue that's going on all the time, all the time, even when you don't want it to be there. You can't stop yourself right now from thinking. You can't do it. It's going on. And so learning how to empower yourself, part of doing that is standing up to yourself. You'll get scared sometimes. Your mind will go blank on you. Some people you will allow to unnerve you. And you wonder, what's wrong with me? I'm not crazy. That's why you've got to learn to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to stand up inside yourself. Working on yourself, watching that inner dialogue, it will determine the quality of your life. We all know when we relax exactly the person we want to become. The question is, do we believe we can become it? Very few people are going to tell you this, but growth hurts. Becoming the best version of yourself comes with a lot of goodbyes. Sadly, the only way for some people to learn to appreciate you is to lose you. It's really f***ing uncomfortable, but you need to do it if you want to grow. The pain that you feel today, though, is going to be the power that you're going to feel tomorrow. It's not glamorous. It's lonely. As you start changing, everything around you starts changing. It's not even fun in the beginning. And so you'd either have to have an incredible amount of hope or a ridiculous amount of inspiration and delusion, or you have to be in so much pain that the alternative to continuing this pain that you're in is to try something different because it's the only thing that might be slightly less painful than what you're doing. Most people lack the ability to master the mundane tasks. They get bored very easily. They don't feel like doing things. They don't understand that to build a life, it is mundane. It is the same things day in and day out, operating at a high level, holding a high standard, executing with discipline. Most people just can't do that because they don't have the endurance to do that. They don't have the fortitude to do that. They don't have the perseverance to do that, which is why it's important for you to build yourself into someone who does. That way you can follow the path to success because there is only one path. And the only path there is, is day by day by day by day over the course of a period of time. You've got to be okay that there's going to be people that don't think you're qualified. You got to get okay that there's going to be some people that want to see you fail. You're going to have to get okay that there are going to be some people that never understand you, that never support you, that never cheer you on, and you're okay to do it without their applause. You're okay to do it without their approval. You got to get to a season and a space and a time where it's okay. I wasn't doing this for you anyways. Nobody is going to give you anything that you have not earned. Nobody cares how tough your upbringing was. 
you have to remember that whatever you've gone through, it pales in comparison to the hardships previous generations endured and they overcame them. And if they overcame them, you can overcome them too. Courage. Courage is the key to life itself. There are a lot of people who are born in situations where they say, well, I'll never get out of this. So they won't. I say to people who say, well, I, I would like to have done so and so and so. So well, you could have done it. So, well, I couldn't get out of here. Man, the bus runs every day. You will offend people as you're pursuing your vision. You even believing that anything is possible will offend people. You maximizing your potential will offend people who are so limited in their thinking that instead of progressing their lives and their mindsets, they want to stop you from being the best version of yourself. And you can either live your life to please them, shrink yourself to a point where they will be happy and comfortable with you, or you can have the shameless audacity to do it anyways, to go after your dream anyways, to learn, to grow, to maximize your potential anyways, regardless of who it offends. You do what you love, you will work harder than you ever have worked and are harder than you could ever imagine. Your dreams will call for that kind of commitment. It took an insane work ethic for me to get here. It took time and commitment and sacrificing. If you continue to believe as you have always believed, you will continue to act as you have always acted. You will continue to get what you have always gotten. If you want different results in your life or your work, all you have to do is change your mind. You feel that pressure inside of you and it's very heavy. You're motivated, you feel it. I've got to get up in the morning, I've got to do this, I've got to accomplish this. When that pressure goes away and, and you don't feel any pressure in your life, you can do anything and there's no consequences for it. You'll just waste time, you'll waste years, you'll waste months, you'll never accomplish anything. You give somebody a deadline, right? They'll accomplish in two months what it would take somebody two years to do without a deadline. It's that necessity, it's that sense of, there's a, there's a sword at my back, I've gotta get it done. Love your life, you know, find the things that you can enjoy, be curious. You don't have to have all the answers. I'm a hardcore believer that everybody has something that they're really, really, really good at that could be world-class great, every single human being on this planet. And the hard part is just finding what that is. It is not everyone's job to make sure that you feel good. It is not everyone's job to solve your problems. It's not everyone's job to make sure you're happy. That's on you, only you. Understand that you are where you're at because of the decisions you made and the actions you took. And if you manage to convince yourself that it's everyone else's fault that you're miserable, not only is your entire life a lie, but you will be stuck in that misery forever. Sacrifice temporary fun for permanent dreams or sacrifice your permanent dreams for temporary fun. And the reality is a lot of you guys are willing to sacrifice your permanent dreams for some temporary fun. It's never been so easy to win because so many people are checked out, so many people are scared, so many people aren't doing the work. It's the time to roll up your sleeves and in many ways spend the next month getting lost from the world, optimizing yourself, building your battle sheets and game charts, dialing in your daily habits so that you bring it on when you come back out into the world.